Growing up in Tasmania, Keely McMahon had an idyllic childhood. It was good. It was very easygoing. I had really relaxed parents that were always there for us, always did stuff with us. But everything changed at the age of 14, when Keely says she was sexually abused by her mother's colleague and family friend. I knew his position in the community. I knew that he was a, a well-known man that everybody knew and loved and that he was just really well respected. Um, I knew that if I said anything about what had happened, that people either wouldn't believe me or something would happen to him. That colleague was James Geoffrey Griffin, a nurse working in the children's ward at the Launceston General Hospital, shown here in footage the ABC filmed after a press conference at the hospital in 2016. This one's so much longer than the other one. After another victim came forward in 2019, Keely told her mum and the police about her abuse. Within months, three more women had made allegations of child sexual abuse by Griffin. That's when it kind of all started to sink in that something wasn't quite right and that there were so many other people that had been hurt by him. Tasmanian police have now admitted they first received concerns about Griffin as early as 2009. More reports followed in 2011, 2013 and 2015, including a referral from the Australian Federal Police. But it wasn't until 2019 that Griffin was formally charged. If they'd acted on it like they should have, I wouldn't have been abused. I would have had a normal childhood. I would have loved school. I would have finished school. I would have gotten through and been able to do something with my life. Griffin killed himself within weeks of being charged with a series of sexual crimes. Allegations about the nurse were first exposed on a podcast by journalist Camille Bianchi. At the same time, civil action and the National Redress Scheme were revealing claims of abuse in other government agencies. Since October, 15 state service employees have been stood down pending investigation for alleged sexual abuse or misconduct. I don't think the government has given uh, an adequate explanation about why it has refused to identify in general terms where these people are from. Some work in the state's youth detention centre, another at a school and others are employed by the health department. One has been charged, one has returned to work. But the Tasmanian government says it can't provide any further details until investigations are complete. The legal advice that I've received is that uh, it's not appropriate to provide more information, um, that uh, natural justice needs to be provided. This situation is nothing short of terrible. We must... Under mounting pressure, the state government last year announced a commission of inquiry, Tasmania's version of a royal commission. I can't change the past, uh, but I can certainly change the future, and I want to ensure that our kids are safe moving forward. I think it's something that the government that successive governments have not only failed to acknowledge but kept under wraps and not allowed to come out. After winning a battle with the Tasmanian legal system for the right to speak out about her abuse, Grace Tame is now pushing for a focus on prevention. Grooming is not widely understood. The lasting impacts of child sexual abuse are not widely understood. This needs to be our focus and we need to hear from lived experience survivors. It was something that was never discussed when I was going through, through school, so I had no one to turn to. I didn't, didn't know what to do or um, I, I, didn't know, I didn't know what I should do about it except to just keep the matter to myself. Sam Leishman thought he was the only child being sexually abused by his high school teacher. He was 12 when he was targeted. Decades later, his abuser was jailed for the sexual abuse of boys in the 1970s, 80s and 90s. To know that, that you know, there were other kids and plus there, there were sort of gaps in this, this um, person's history that still haven't been filled, filled in, it, it's, it, it's, it was quite confronting and, and upsetting to learn about that.
Documents from the Department of Education show concerns and complaints were raised about Sam's abuser, Daryl George Harrington, and he was moved from school to school. After seeking answers through right to information laws, Sam Leishman was told his abuser would need to give permission for some information to be released. I was pretty dumbfounded by it. I just felt totally stymied by the process. Melbourne lawyer Angela Sidrinas is in the process of formulating a class action for at least 80 complainants who claim abuse at Tasmania's youth detention facility. She's found it difficult to get information from government departments. We don't want another inquiry which hands down a report at the end where everyone rides off into the sunset and nothing changes. For those forced to live in the shadow of childhood sexual abuse, the Commission offers the chance to make their voices heard. Until things have changed, I'm not going to be silenced and I know there's a lot of other victims that are not going to stay silent if things aren't changed. And if either of the two previous stories have raised any issues for you, there's help available at Lifeline on 13 11 14 or Beyond Blue on 1300 22 46 36. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.